minimum weight world champion, introducing the undefeated Ricardo Benito Lopez had some of the best footwork ever seen in a boxing ring. It wasn't flashy, but it was clever, precise, purposeful and elusive. Lopez did use a higher volume of movement than average, and he did fight at the lightest weight class. However, there are elements of his footwork that can be used by a fighter of any weight. I'll be looking at just five aspects of Lopez's footwork, but there's plenty more that can be learned. Lopez on the right is boxing a southpaw. Now, this is something he never really had any trouble with. In these series of clips, the opponent is trying to pressure Lopez and to close the distance. And you'll notice that Lopez is not circling around the outside of the ring, he's circling the opponent. Lopez is trying to move around his opponent in tight circles. This shift in mentality creates a different kind of dynamic. In this clip, the boxer in red is circling around the ring. This can still be a successful tactic, but it can also be a little bit mentally tiring. It can give a feeling of being hunted or being pursued. And it also puts less pressure on the attacker. While Lopez uses a lot of movement, he's still able to be aggressive and he's still able to discourage the opponent. In these clips, instead of a sense of the opponents pursuing Ricardo Lopez, it looks more like he's circling the opponents and picking them off. Now it's impossible for a fighter to have control for the whole fight and they will find themselves against the ropes at various points. Ricardo Lopez will try and escape off the ropes but he'll try and get back towards the middle of the ring as soon as possible. Now for most fighters the tendency would be to be relatively static in front of the opponent. This might be for reasons of being efficient and economical but it's also unnatural for people to move that much. Going by the maxim that you fight how you train, Ricardo Lopez obviously would have had to drill this movement in his training. On top of this, it would require a lot of stamina to maintain this volume of movement. Often when moving to the left, Ricardo Lopez would pull his front foot back and out to the side. Sometimes he would even pull that front foot behind the back foot. In the following clips, the boxers are moving to the left, but they're remaining in a very bladed stance, and they're failing to keep enough distance from the opponent's rear hand. When Ricardo Lopez moves to the left in this way, he also pulls his head off of the center line. If he needs to, he can also change levels quite easily. This wide step left is one of the most noticeable elements of Ricardo Lopez's style, and it forms the building block for much of his game. It allowed Lopez to circle and be able to change directions quickly. He also used it to switch to a southpaw stance, and he was able to create a different kind of threat when he was circling left. As a beginner, most boxers are taught to avoid squaring up, which is fundamentally good advice. However, there are times and circumstances and places in the ring where squaring up can make sense, such as when trying to get into close range against an aggressive come forward type fighter, in fighting, or when nearing or against the ropes. Lopez fought a tough Korean fighter named Kim Jong-Lee. It seemed the Koreans game plan 
was to pressure Lopez aggressively to close the distance, to be able to throw his combinations and to deny Lopez the time and space to pick him off at range. And the Korean was largely successful at denying Lopez the time and space to use his long range skills. One way Lopez dealt with this pressure was to fight in a more squared up stance. Firstly, this made it easier to circle sideways and to avoid bull rushes or being driven straight back to the ropes. By using constant movement and quick smooth changes of direction, Lopez was able to carry out the common wisdom against an aggressive opponent. Keep turning them, don't let them get sent to throw full power punches, and deny them the time and space to throw a combination. Having a more square stance has another benefit. Most aggressive pressure fighters and swarmers will be used to anticipating certain needs, jabs and straights. And in a more squared up stance, Lopez was in a better position to use both of his hands to mix up his punches. When the opponent did manage to back Lopez to the ropes or close the distance with him, Lopez's stance meant that he was more ready to stand his ground, cover up and engage in infighting. Much of Lopez's footwork, simple things coaches tell novice boxers to do. What sets him apart is the discipline, drilling and conditioning to be able to consistently execute these basics. One of the most basic footwork responses to an opponent's attack is to take a short hop or half step backwards. The hop is a quick straightening of the legs. It gets the fighter out of the range of the punch quicker than a large jump back or at least takes some of the sting out of the punch. A large jump back takes a fraction of a second longer due to the need for the front leg to brace and to push harder. A hop or half step back also allows the boxer to be in range to counter. If the attacker continues moving forward, the momentum of the first hop can be used to make the second hop back bigger. Building on this basic footwork comes another fundamental. Against an oncoming attack, take one or maximum two steps or hops back and then angle off. And whether you're using simple or complex footwork combinations, the first movement has a backward component. Towards the end of his career, Ricardo Lopez's circle advised him to consider retirement. His footwork wasn't quite the same as it had been before. He was still boxing beautifully and winning his fights, but he was starting to make more and more footwork errors. Occasionally he was moving back in a straight line, or not angling off enough, or not getting enough distance on his second hop back. 
while his footwork may not have been quite the same as earlier in his career, even at the end of his career, it was still some of the best that you're likely to see in a boxing ring.